So join me now in welcoming alphabetically by country, Dr. Kathy Foley, Chief Scientist of Australia. She is the ninth ever Chief Scientist for the country of Australia. Prior to this role, she served as Chief Scientist for Australia's National Science Agency, known as the Commonwealth Science and Industrial Research Organization. Let's introduce Dr. Kathy. Give round of applause, please. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, so I'm going to stand here today. Hi, everyone. It's really great to be here again. And thank you for coming to listen. A little bit more detail of uh, what Australia is doing in uh, quantum in the last 12 months. But I thought what I'd do is just uh, give you a bit of an overview to put things in place and give a bit of context for those of you who may not know what we've been doing. So um, there's a long list of things there that Australia's been doing for the last 20 years or so in quantum. I just want to highlight a couple. And one is that we've got eight Australian universities that are ranked well above world standards. So having quality research is part of what we think is important if we're going to push the boundaries on quantum technologies. Another is that we've got a number of startups that are employing people. And when we're talking to governments, jobs are a major focus for, for um, even though we don't always have the skills that we need, but having jobs created is a really good measure of success. And then the final one is that when we're looking at Australia, we're 0.3% of the world's population. We do about 4% of the world's research. And, the and when we look at Australia's quantum research, even though we are a small country, we're ranked sixth, sixth if we uh, count some of the uh, ways of comparing research capability. So this is something which means that it's put Australia in a position to see how we can turn this strong research capability into a new industry for Australia. And so one of the things we've been doing in recent times is uh, trying to coordinate across the country. You can see Australia is a big land mass. Uh, we're about the same size as land, main, mainland uh, USA, to give you an idea of that. But we have the population of Shanghai uh, around the edges. And so each state and territory has got a uh, quantum engagement. And you can see a list there of all the different universities involved. But also we've started um, an, a number of different companies that have come out of the university sector. And there's about 20 um, and growing uh, of those companies which are really making an impact. And you can see some of them here today, uh, such as Q-Control. Uh, some time ago when I was in CSRO, I think it was about 1920, uh, we um, got together as a community and said, can we have a roadmap to say, will quantum make a difference economically? And this inspired our government in Australia to then undertake the prepare, preparation of a global strat, uh, quantum, oh, sorry, a national quantum strategy. And that was launched in May this year. And uh, the idea was to try and have an ecosystem approach, pulling together all the different things that are just listed up there to work together to see how we can have a coordinated systems approach to deliver a quantum industry for Australia. Because uh, we've got that great capability. We've um, graduated about 2,500 PhD students over the last 20 years. And um, we've got the ambition and the entrepreneurial spirit to do that. So our quantum strategy, we, we did want to make sure that it was a strategy that had an impact and was uh, specific for the Australian content. It wasn't a, let's take uh, any country's quantum strategy, cross out their country name and just put Australia in there. We actually wanted to make sure it represented our Australian values and the opportunity. So some of the areas, of course, are common to all strategies across different countries. So skilled workforce, for example, making sure we have thriving research and development and investment. But we are, and also making sure that we have the infrastructure to support the research as well as the startup businesses. But we also identified that it's really important that we look at the standards and the frameworks to support national interests, making sure, though, that they don't stifle the development of businesses, the development of the science, and that we actually do this in a sensible way. And then the final one is that it was really important that we approach this in a way that there are ethical, trusted technologies that the broader co population feel that they are able to say this is something of our everyday. And I'll finish off with that at the end as to what we're doing to try and make sure it's inclusive. You just have to look around at most research teams in quantum that there are not enough women uh, who are in uh, being encouraged from primary school 
through high school to university to actually quantum capabilities in the university sector as well as in industry and government. And we need to turn that around because otherwise we're not going to be able to be inclusive. The other, and also solve the challenges and also have the workforce. The other is also there's about 16 to 17 countries that have strong ex, uh, capabilities in quantum. There's about 180 countries in the world. That means there's going to be uh, haves and have nots. And we have to think Australia is in the Asia Pacific rim and it's something which we have to be aware of, of how we engage with quantum in our local area and make sure that we bring those other countries that may be developing with us in this journey. And then the final thing is that we make sure that it is something which is trusted and is not something that's going to lead to something such as in Australia, genetically modified foods were introduced in a way which didn't bring the community along and they were paused for about 10 years, which meant that there was a delay in some important uh, development of agricultural um, materials and, and plants and in order to be able to progress um, feeding our nation and the world. The government has undertaken uh, initiatives, which is a little bit different from other countries. Instead of saying, here's a lump of money for quantum, because we want to make it into something which is for the everyday, um, they've identified a couple of things which need to be supported. But also uh, they've got programs which are such as the National Reconstruction Fund, which has just been set up. It's sort of like the government's venture capital, where they've earmarked a um, billion dollars of that to support critical technologies of which quantum is a major focus area. And that's what they've done in other areas too. So, for example, further down the list is Australia's Economic Accelerator, which is looking to see how we can help universities take great research uh, but be able to be nurtured through to be able to be standalone startups. And uh, that economic accelerator has got $1.6 billion where quantum is a priority area. And the same with uh, Defence Advanced Strategic Capabilities Ex Accelerator. Again, quantum is a focus. I must admit, when I started my work in quantum uh, back in the 1980s, I never thought that I would see a government or uh, governments seeing quantum as being absolutely part of their strategy and being part of their uh, priority areas. So it's really great to see that, but it's also really good to see how they want it to be part of the everyday. However, there are two areas that are quantum specific, and that's the Critical Technologies Challenge Program, which is being set up to say, what are the, some challenges there that then can attract people to align their research to solve some major problems? And the other one is an Australian uh, Centre for Quantum Growth, which is trying to make sure that we've got the ecosystem operating across the country to support the startups and also our com companies that we hope multinationals coming into the country. Since we were here last year, there's been some uh, quite big developments which are aligned with quantum, and I just want to quickly go through them. The first one is setting up the Australian Quantum Alliance Industry Group under our Tech Council of Australia. So it's our own um, industry um, group, a bit like the QEDC here, with the idea of bringing quantum industries together as their way of gathering um, a voice to, to government. Uh, one of our top universities, Sydney University, has set up, I think they're putting in about $7 million into setting up a Qubit foundry. Um, CSIRO, which is the organisation which I came from after being there for 36 years, uh, has started investing big time into quantum technologies and the role of the government funded agency is to uh, see how we can bridge that gap between uh, university sector and industry, so that's going to be very important. Our New South Wales government has set up a packaging facility or in the process of setting that up. The Australian Research Council has funded yet another um, uh, centre of excellence, which has been absolutely critical for the way we've been able to support quantum research over uh, the last two decades. And this is in quantum biotechnology. Uh, there's an annual conference which is coming up next February called uh, Quantum Australia Conference. And it's, uh, it's have it, having its third year. It's, I guess, a version of this, but in Australia, in Sydney. So you're all most welcome to come to that conference. And, um, and then uh, there's also an international conference on quantum energy, which is being held in Melbourne in December. Uh, what we've seen too is the attraction of international companies coming into Australia, and in particular Inflection, uh, which came into Melbourne and was uh, co-funded to do this with the Victorian Breakthrough, um, Breakthrough Victoria uh, Venture Capital Fund. 
Um, and, that, and you can see there, there's state investment through Breakthrough Victoria and other ways of funding uh, industry to come into, into Australia, as well as to help startups. But also CSIRO has uh, main sequence ventures, which has been really uh, pivotal in supporting quantum companies. And, and Q Control is an example of that, where they funded that uh, business right at its very early stages. Final thing which we've, I guess, started up is a really fun thing where we're trying to create um, science meets. So it's almost like a dating app for uh, bringing uh, quantum into the, into the uh, realm of uh, different industry sectors. And we had one quantum meet sport um, in August. And we've got one in biotech and medical areas coming up. We'll go through finance, defence, space, communications and so on in order to make sure that industry understands where quantum opportunities are, but introduce them to the researchers and the businesses so that we can make them uh, realise, first of all, their preparedness for it, but also uh, see that they may be able to uh, invest in and be purchasers of technologies from these startups. So as you can see, we've been building up a strong ecosystem, and even though we're a relatively small country with a, you know, a, sp a spaced out uh, population, we can, you can see that each state and territory has an ambition for quantum, and um, you can go onto the Australian website, uh, just look at uh, the National Quantum Strategy, and this will be part of the strategy work there. But it's already out of date. For example, Queensland, we need to add an extra icon there because it's just launched its, its own state strategy for quantum, which is pretty exciting. The other thing that's really important too is that um, by multilateral arrangements uh, between countries, and you've probably heard about AUKUS, which is between Australia, US and, um, and UK, uh, is uh, identifying uh, quantum as a significant technology that needs to be included. And as I said uh, previously, who would have thought that uh, a quantum would be part of trilateral um, or in the case of, um, of the quad between India, uh, Japan, Australia and US would have quantum as a centre for that? as a major um, a plank of those collaborations. And uh, this is something where I think it's showing that this is going to be a technology that is going to have a major impact, and we need to make sure we take that all the way through. So I guess overall, our ambition in Australia is to say that we're not at the bottom of the world. We're often seen as a long way away. But as our, our um, um, American ambassador, Kevin Rudd, who is a previous Prime Minister of Australia, who um, uh, often says that coming to Australia is just um, a, a big sleep, which is always really nice, because those of you who are really busy, it's, you, sleep is the thing we lose out on, and two movies on an aeroplane flight. Don't th think of it that way, not as a 15-hour flight from Dulles. Um, it's very nice and a great place to come, but also it's something where uh, we want to see it as this... Um, our position globally is actually in the Asia-Pacific rim, and it's something where we hope you will see as a, a pathway to engage in that region. Finally, I just want to finish off with the fact that if we want to make quantum part of our everyday, I think we've got to get into the minds and the spirit of everyone. So we're actually uh, in the process of creating what we think is Australia's quantum mascot. And I want to introduce you to our mascot, Qubit, who is, um, you can see there where he's got, uh, I think you call them flip-flops here. Um, we call them thongs, which has probably got different connotations in different countries. But you can see here that um, we're taking this very seriously. We're hoping that every Australian child will be thinking about Qubit as their lovely fluffy toy. And who knows, there'll be a whole new Mattel-type uh, uh, um, arrangement where uh, we'll be having movies and everything with Qubit starring in it. Anyway, look, thank you so much for giving me this chance to talk to you today. And I hope that you might consider Australia as a place for you to engage both collaboratively as a re for research, for uh, being a business where you can see Australia as a landing um, place for you to go into the Asia-Pacific market, and also to uh, see the businesses that we've started up that might be part of your supply chain to build your quantum technologies as well. So thanks very much, and it was great to be able to talk to you today.